When you think of an expansion, you think bells and whistles, a tweak here, an addition there. Well, what about taking the core of a competitive game and twisting and turning it into a big sexy pseudo campaign co-op? Welcome to Dice Throne Adventures in 5 minutes or less. Your journey will take you from the Crimson Sands all the way to the Mad King's Throne Room where destiny dictates you have one or two dust-ups on the way to locking horns with the demented monarch himself, who hasn't lost a ruck in a thousand years. Huh, imagine that. First things first, this is not a standalone expansion. You need one or more heroes from the base product line to get this thing to work. At its heart, core dice throwing is all about dice rolling and manipulation. Think the ethos of a dueling card game mixed with Yahtzee dice re-rolling and poker style objectives, where you unleash powerful abilities depending on what combination of dice you're left with. But in adventures, you smash face against AI opponents, alternating between dungeon crawl-esque scenarios when you and your optional teammates face a string of varying difficulty minions before you go up against a mini-boss, to showdowns with actual big goners that will stretch your character's capabilities to the limit. Oh, and there's loot aplenty that you'll use to upgrade your deck of abilities. And although there is a campaign here, there's very little upkeep between scenarios, so it functions fine as a one and done experience. With games of multiplayer allowing you to pick and choose between going it alone or teaming up against higher level minions during the portal crawls, and the big boss battles scaling to player count and alternating their attacks against you. So why might you like it? Well, first and foremost, this is a well-designed and cohesively executed cooperative addition to a competitive game. The two types of scenario you face feel equally rewarding, whether it's gobbling up loot in the portal crawl or really testing your metal against tuned up big baddies, there's more than enough here to hold its own against its sibling. It's also a game that moves forward at a fair clip and doles out rewards on a regular basis without diluting the experience of achieving said bounties. Build as a board game version of a hack and slash video game, that's actually a pretty apt description. Most of the time you're engaging in the fun things it has to offer, and although there is some bookkeeping, that's mostly kept to a minimum. The game is also well served by its menagerie of minions that are varied and interesting much more than you might expect. There are all sorts of playstyles thrown at you, whether it's direct damage, debuffs or other indirect means of pwning you, meaning you can almost forgive them for the large swathes of undefensible damage that negates your ability to make defensive dice rolls. But why might you not like it? Well, not all heroes are necessarily balanced for this cooperative environment. In competitive matchups, it doesn't matter if your character is geared towards burning your opponent down or controlling them. But when scenarios in adventures are more about the marathon of multiple opponents or uber durable big bosses, not every hero is created equal. One missed opportunity is that character progression is completely generic. The base game allows you to upgrade your abilities, but all the loot found here by design is hero non-specific, meaning that once you've seen 1 or 12 loot cards, you've seen them all. A system that allows for expanding a hero's capabilities using loot would certainly have been welcome. If you're looking for similar games, then both adventure tactics and roleplayer adventures fill a similar niche. What we ultimately have here though is an excellent example of transitioning competitive dueling into a cooperative environment. Alas, I have been the voice of Benji, and this video has ended. Who else is equal parts intrigued and mortified about the prospect of a dice being a sitting ruler?